publicity that you don't, as a candidate, you don't have to worry. For example, media exposure is practically virtually been free because media, including the internet uh, media, are totally interested in voter education, responsible voting, clean elections, and so they're holding an enormous amount of forum discussions, debates that have never happened in 2004. And plus all the vote watching is also going on. So it's like a pool, no one's orchestrating it, but it's like a lot of millions of frustrated Filipinos taking into their own hands what government has failed to give them. So this is starting to happen. And, and, and this is the reason why this country is right, both for a political and a cultural revolution. And this is what we want to try to bring about in May 2010. Thank you. Yes. No, sir. Is it, is it really a question here? Is it really seven million? million? Yes, seven million. Yes, because some, some people could not believe that we should bring about seven million million. Seven million. No, it's million uh, this point 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 yeah, no, this, no, this one of the networks. Yes, one of the networks is assisted for a long time. Okay. They've been waiting for a presidential candidate that would really speak about their concerns and their issues. I don't know them. In fact, they approached me in a small in Cebu and publicly announced. They, that's, why, that's why I'm going back to Cebu to actually formalize their support. And they can they promise me to mobilize the song desires more than that. Uh, I will name the group or this, this national movement when we agree on the terms of partnership. And this is only one of a number that's starting to happen. Yeah. So they were not created overnight. This has been in existing for a long time. And they have been frustrated, really, by the many elections that have happened. And they're waiting for the opportune moment for the emergence of a candidate that would really bring in new politics. And from their leadership, and just observing for the last several months without contacting me, they felt that I carry the brand of leadership that they were looking for. So the more you have to, to uh, the more you have to protect your votes and to educate your voters. Exactly. And so uh, that's why uh, the education part of it is the focus right now. And at the start of the election campaign period, the formal one, then also the strategy on how to protect votes also come in. But as I was being, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, there are a lot of people really wanting clean elections. Uh, we are also what that carries a lot of our global supporters to come to the Philippines and observe elections. Because this is part of that effort to, you know, they're not going to interfere, but they're just going to report irregularities and to the global press so that the world is actually going to watch this election. Just like the world watched, the world was watching the formal decision that we can actually allow the, the world to watch the election. Okay, um, do you have a question? Can you move closer to the mic? You're watching Nicanor Perlas running for presidential kind of, uh, presidential position. You're 1,600 viewers right now. Okay, great. Okay, okay. hi. Uh, if you will allow, I will just try to ask and play devil's advocate. Sure. That's, the, that's the best. <laughs> uh, it's assuming that you are going to be elected president, right. you will still have to work with a vice president who will not be from your yes. uh, from your from your uh, platform. Uh, you will have to work with Congress and the Senate. And a lot of these people are still used to old politics. Uh, people are going to be asking, how will you manage to overturn that and introduce your idea of new politics? You only have six years. What can you do in six years to influence them, your way of thinking, as well as eradicate corruption? Okay. Uh, that's a very nice, complicated question. <laughs> with many nuances uh, to it, and uh, I'll start. I'll start with the first one. I mean, uh, part of our call, and as I was explaining earlier, our message is "Tayong lahat ang magbabago ng Pilipinas." That means to say, it's actually mobilizing the massive 
sentiment of the citizenship, especially for those people who voted for me and put me into office, trying to find a way to engage them constructively in recreating a new country. That, that's the first thing. So what it means operationally is that we will open the government of the Philippines is going to become one of the most transparent and accountable in the history of this country, if not the most transparent and accountable. We will, to give a concrete example, let's say DNR. We will open up DNR to all the environmental groups. They're going to be have access to all the records, transparency, so that there will be groups that have been lobbying there, advocating there. DNR has to deal with that kind of civil society. The same with education, maybe the public age, and with all the different civil society watch groups, it's going to be open. On top of that, the budget will be placed the internet, so it's very clear this money is going for this kind of project. So you are actually then involving Filipinos, and if the few congressmen or senators would like to stonewall such an effort, they're going to become very well known through media because now the new government will have a lot of access to the media. It's on media stations plus the mainstream plus the internet. We'll, we'll, we'll expose those who don't want to cooperate. But that's just the kind of down the line. The first approach for a vice president who will be not coming from my own party is to actually have a discussion. This is the vision of the Philippines. And let's have a conversation whether you support that or not. But one thing is clear there's not going to be net, no favoritism. This will be a government of meritocracy and so on. And if you cannot abide by that, then we will clearly define our lives. So the, the, the approach is conciliatory, trying to get them on board. But at the same time, there are very clear principles that have to be done. And then second is involve a lot of citizens, become transparent. Number three, there are a lot of laws that are not being implemented, that have to be implemented. A lot of environmental laws are being followed, a lot of anti-graphic corruption laws are being followed, a lot of human rights laws that are not being followed. If you have a very strong executive, that's going to be followed. You don't need new legislation. Of course, in the legislation, then you're going to be dependent, but then you can create a public context for new legislation to be passed. That's what I used to do in the past when I didn't sit in government. We were able to pass some pretty important laws in this country just by advocating. We also have shaped the globalization policy of the government from the outside by mobilizing mass support from the outside. In the end, senators who are not with us are if they're traditional politicians, they understand the meaning of votes that they will lose when, from time and time again, they will be viewed as obstructors to the creation of a visionary country. I, I don't think anybody in his right mind would like to be you know, identified with that kind of uh, image. And then the fourth is to institutionalize. Government should not be the basis of the charisma of one person. We should really institutionalize performance, accountability, transparency, meritocracy, a genuine civil service, so that after I'm done, there are other, possi there are other possibilities that we can happen. So there are many ways you can, you can deal with uh, potential division, potential conflict. And uh, part of my past experience is that I have to mediate conflict. So I, I'm not a confrontational person, if not necessary. 